really quite good, isn't he? Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan, and welcome to Ball in Europe. And uh, today it's all about Avicii. Avicii Zubac is off to an absolutely sensational start this season with the LA Clippers. I'm going to talk to you about the start, just how good he's been, why things have changed, you know, in terms of what's gone, and why things have improved because of what's come in, and what we can hope for. Uh, before we get to it, if you haven't already, please subscribe, it always helps. But now, let's just talk about how really, really good Ivica Zubac is. He's just put the team on his back, it really is that simple. So Zubac, obviously his minutes are up by about 10 per game from last season already, this campaign, and we're seeing that reflect in his stats. His rebounds are up significantly, his points are up really significantly, and he's acting more as a creator. And we shouldn't really be surprised, because right now the Clippers, obviously Kawhi is injured, uh, need him in that role. But also because of the changes around the floor, there's more room for Zubac to be more prominently featured, for him to have the ball in hand more and be making the decisions more, essentially. And that's obviously a huge boost to LA. So the question, obviously, for them was, would he be able to handle this? And I think we can say a resounding yes. He's slightly down on field goal percentage. He's slightly up on turnovers. But again, even reflected on usage, not that much. And usage is so important to start, even though it is very hard to understand, even for me at times. By and large, he's basically said, I can go from what you had me doing, which is an important role, into a very important role. And if anything, I might even get better. And that is so crucial to the Clippers right now, because obviously a lot of change in the offseason whole lot of uh, hype around them with a the new arena into a dome and it's a big wall and uh, yeah Zubac uh, obviously most of two of their games have been on the road he showed out at 23 and 17 in his most reading out, recent outing which also came with six times don't forget was just classic this is you know my job I've got to get those boards and I gotta you know get the points I've got to be all things to the clips right now and he's doing it he's getting it done he is delivering and that's just nice to see. But also, it's remarkable to think about this because Zubac is a guy who has had to sort of, you know, remind people how good he is over and over again. Obviously, European bigs have somewhat taken over the NBA in various different styles. Zubac's nearest comparison stylistically is Nikola Jokic, but at the same time, no one's comparing him to Nikola Jokic stylistically <laughs> because obviously there's no three ball there. Then you go, well, like, who is he like? And you go, well, he's just the first of each of Zubac, really. Like, you know, you're not going to see any threes from him. You're going to see some clever movement from him. But uh, a lot of it comes down to how much you're going to trust him. And he has largely been trusted by the Clippers over the years, but the opportunity for that trust to really be demonstrated wasn't there. And obviously, Zubac has now said, well, you do trust me now, and the opportunity's here. Let's let's see how it rocks. And it's worked. And let's not forget, the Clippers got him for an absolute bargain. Like, when he came to the Clippers, he was a very promising youngster at the Lakers. I was about to say cross town, but of course, they shared arenas now. The now cross town Lakers, we can say. And uh, it was a bit of a surprise. Like, he was part of a deal that sent Mike Muscala to L.A., Y'all committed daylight robbery, folks. And also, right now, the Clippers couldn't be asking for a better time for Zubac to be coming good because he's just signed a new contract in the summer. So you've got him for three more years. Worst case, you trade him and get a crazy amount of assets in return. That's your worst case scenario. Uh, best case, obviously, he is a focal point on a pretty good deal for you in terms of where you can do other things around it and drive that team into a, another level of contention in the West. So the, the situation with Zubac, for, and of course, he's still only 27, by the way. He doesn't turn 28 until March. So you're getting him at what should be the beginning of his peak years, really, as a big in the NBA. So if you're looking at this from a Clippers business perspective, and fans obviously you care about the salary cap in terms of business because they want to make sure there's space and room you've done very good business at Avicii Zubac and it's starting to repay already like we're like three games into this new contract and it's already showing to have value that's great so what changed that we're able to see all this let's be honest Clippers fans um you were a little associated with drama. Like the Kawhi and Paul George dynamic, we can discuss till the cows come home what was going on there. And the bottom line is, is that you had two guys who needed to be number one and nobody was willing to be 1A. And, you know, you can say all the other stuff around it. You can say I'm oversimplifying. I am. But that's a fundamentally, you know, where it comes back to. And 
obviously both of them being healthy at the same time wasn't always a guarantee, uh, which didn't help. George leaving, you know, meet, you know, it was one of the rare cases of a big star leaving a team and people not exactly upset about it, I think it's safe to say. And so, yeah, it's like kind of going, oh, they might be able to do something else. So you he's gone, but also Russ is gone. And again, you're going to go, big star leaving a team, gets good counting stats. Are we sure this is a good thing? Nice little trade movement. Got some pieces for him. Uh, got stuff to work with there. And, you know, Russ needs a lot of the ball. Paul George needs a lot of the ball. Kawhi needs a lot of the ball. These are guys who need a lot of the ball. If you're going to have an Avicii Zubac in there, he's not really going to get a lot of the ball. And he's quite good when he has the ball in hand and can do things for those other guys who need the ball. So, you go, right, well, we've kind of dialed out a drama. Kawhi obviously is out and definitely injured. We don't know how long that's going to be. Uh, obviously, you know, I me mean, just as a neutral who enjoys watching Kawhi play, Kawhi play when he's Kawhi, my word, what if Kyrie Irving and Kawhi Leonard merged into one person? That would be fascinating. The laugh would actually be scary. But now, Kawhi Leonard, uh, you know, we don't know how long he's gone for. Obviously, wishing the best in recovery. I don't see, like to see any athlete out injured. But, you know, as a result, this is a really dialed down drama version of the clips. And there's still quite a lot of talent out there. We're going to get to the talent that's out there, don't worry. And you kind of go, yeah, like this is a, you know, team that just looks more like an actual team out there. Like, obviously, there have been plenty of bad teams that have looked like teams out there and just didn't have the quality required. But this is a team that looks like a team out there that can get dubs, that can focus, that can win, and has the capacity in terms of talent to do it. And, like, Zubic, by the way, is far too used to drama. Like, he's part of the Croatian national side as well. And that's its own drama roller coaster in its own right. Uh, mainly because their ability to just uh, have everything go wrong for them at every major tournament. With uh, repetitive uh, force. Uh, and, obviously, Zubac puts in the work. Like, I saw him at Eurobasket last, a couple of years ago. Was putting in his work. Uh, was, you know, got that lunch pail mentality. Was doing it. But you felt that everything was going to around him. So not exactly ideal. So you put Zubac in a situation where the drama has been dialed down and it's good. Then you see what came in. So there are people on the Clippers who hate drama now, that is, and one of whom is not who you might think. Nick Batum, he's towards the backside of his career. He's retired from national team play effectively and he's very much at that stage of he just wants to be in the best basketball situation for him. Obviously, his defense is adored by uh, NBA teams still at this point in his career. And he's a guy who doesn't need fuss. He doesn't need nonsense around him. So you've got him in. And he's obviously a useful piece in many, many respects. Like, I know Sixers fans were gutted to not get him back. Like, that's just one good example there. So you've got him. You've got Avicii. Who else have you got? You've got the one who, you're going to be surprised when I say it, doesn't like drama. And that's Harden, James Harden, like, you know, because drama has followed him everywhere. Thing is, he's not always been the one vocally to instigate it. Performance-wise, he might have, like, you know, people talked about the weight, the fitness. People talked about not being able to deliver, all this, all that. But when James Harden is able to just uh, go out and play basketball and he's able to relax and do it, things generally go well. Like, people, you know, there's plenty of critiques of Harden, and I largely agree with a lot of them. But, like, everything about James Harden and the drama that's followed him is, over the years, he's gotten increasingly sick of it. He doesn't like being, like, he wants to be someone who people look about and talk about, but he doesn't want to be so, someone that do so negatively, like, you know? And it's not like some sort of need to be loved, don't get me wrong, but it's this sort of, man, is the only thing people talk about me with is why things are going wrong. So if he's in a situation where the drama can get dialed down, he's going to buy into that. So, you know, let the drama be that, you know, large balding man in the stands who really likes to get excited. Do you know who I mean? Uh, Mr. Bomber. Uh, like, you know, because he can be the drama. Let him be the drama. Because he's not on the court. He only has the best interest of Clippers in mind, even if you might disagree with his decisions. He clearly only has the best interest of Clippers in mind. And he can basically be that magnet. It's like, take it away. Let the players focus on basketball. Focus on basketball. Let the coaching staff focus on basketball. Let me be the guy who any drama comes around. And it's normally just him getting really, really excited. Uh, I'm a tech journalist for 20 years, by the way, so I've been covering Bomber in more than one respect. But yeah, it's like, I kind of go, this is a drama-free Clippers. Like, and I don't know about Clips fans, but I can tell you, as someone who watches basketball that isn't a Clips fan, like as a neutral, 
uh, it's been a while since I've been able to say this is a drama free Clippers. Like, you know, and it's been a long, long, long time. Maybe year one of CP3, you could argue. Uh, which is, you know, going back a bit, guys, going back a little bit. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, you're kind of going, right, It's it's been it's been a while, it's been a long time uh, since we've been able to see the clips uh, in terms of their basketball, just because obviously the other terrible things uh, involving the previous owner uh, are a different matter. But I, when I talk about drama, I mean, I'm referring to the basketball stuff, obviously good riddance and all that. Uh, but like the, the basketball side was drama-free, been a while. It's been a while. And, like, right now, no one's saying the Clippers are, you know, some chaotic mess, which is great for you. No one's saying they're going to win the NBA championship. That's fine. But I think most people, if they took a moment to look at the Clippers objectively right now, they would say this is a team that's improving. This is a team with potential to get better. This is a team that's actually made some useful moves. A lot of people will go, ooh, Harden. But even then you go, hmm, Harden. Like, you know, it's like, you know, he's going to have a lot of the ball, but it's not like the level of need for ball that there was. And, like, the only question really left is uh, Kawhi. Uh, like, and the question there essentially is, can Kawhi be the Kawhi we knew in the past? Like, the one of the Spurs, the one of the Raptors. Um, the one the Clippers have always wanted to have uh, on a consistent basis. And if he can be, great. If he can't be, how can they move on? Uh, but, like, you look at Avicii, and he's kind of going, Mm, whatever. Let's just let's just play basketball. And right now, from your uh, sterling, superb, and uh, somewhat stoic Croatian center, that's that's a great result. And remember, Clips fans, three years this is the beginning of it. Not bad. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It always helps. We do videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And until well, Wednesday, I will see you soon.